All right, g'day, hi, and welcome. Okay, <laughs> my goal wasn't to get completely covered in oil, but uh, my glove got a little bit on the soak side. So I went out for ride number seven this season so far. Here's my lovely motorcycle. But this is my first actual uh, oil change. And uh, there's the plug. Do not lose that. Do not lose the gasket. Uh, it's just a steel washer. But uh, I'm going to show you what Triumph did if I can. I'm going to let it drain for probably about an hour. I'm not, not really... Uh, not really one of those things where uh, oh, it did kind of leak on the bike on the fairing a bit. I thought I thought it was over enough. Oh crap! I better wipe that up. Uh, didn't want to put hot oil on my fairing, but uh, there's enough room to do the oil change. But uh, I guess the way it puked out, I thought I thought it was upright enough. But uh, but anyway, yeah. So this is my first kind of technical oil change here. Bike's nice and warmed up. Oh, ah, oh. Ah, there we go. That, that that part's a little bit still too hot. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll put my Henry here, right over here. Ah, nice one. It was it's cool. Like the 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 air's cool. The, the the bike runs nice. I mean, it was the one day I wanted to get the bike up and nice and hot and warm, and uh, it's like it's kind of cool. As you can see, there's still quite a bit of snow left on the ground here. Uh, we are still in April. It is the 26th, 27th. What day is it? I don't. I, whatever it is. But anyway, I'm gonna let that uh, drip. I didn't think that was going to hit the fairing at all, but apparently it did. Uh, but what Triumph has done, I'll have to show you when I put it back on. But their sump is, is nice and low, so you don't have to necessarily keep the bike completely up straight to drain the oil, like on some bikes, where, you know, the plug's right in the middle, and that's fine and dandy and all, but it, it's a, a flat sump, so you'll always have a little bit of oil left in there. I'll, I'll, you know, stand the bike up just in case there's some in there. But it's like a little, like a little gully that it all should just all drain out pretty good uh the oil doesn't look too bad probably gonna burn my finger doing this but because uh, that's hot oil but it's not dirty 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 like it's still clear it's not black anyway uh but uh, i don't know what kind of oil in that now the reason why it's so slack and thin right now is simply due to the fact that i i just got off it uh my fuel light came on <laughs> my fuel light works uh something that you probably do too uh, open up your uh, cap that way uh, still oil in it still good to go <laughs> uh, not kidding uh, just open that up so that there's uh, enough, no air locks in there or whatever and I'll just put that back on my first oil change on this but not my first time I've ever changed my oil but at least you can do it without taking the fairing off just be mindful that it doesn't uh, do what it just did there I'll get that after because I don't want to ruin my paint job either. So, uh, but it is what it is. So I changed the oil and the filter. I'll have to try to get it in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Hopefully you guys can see. It. I don't want to touch anything because everything's still really hot. But right in there, that's their filter, and I got a filter wrench to get in there. And you don't have to remove the fairing to do it, which is nice. Uh, however, my next thing I'm going to do is my coolant because I'm low on coolant. I don't know where the coolant went, but it just kind of started the bike up in the spring and the coolant was half gone. Uh, now there's more coolant in it. I, I, this bike is a mystery bike. If you guys can explain this, uh, what happens is, okay, see it's at the, I don't know if it could make it out here, but it's just above the minimum. It was just below the minimum um, when I took it out. And the first time I rode it, it still didn't come up above the minimum usually it's somewhere in in between where I, I tend with the coolant i tend to like to keep it right at the max line not over the max line you never want to put too much oil or too much coolant or too much of anything a little less is better than too much uh because it create pressure locks and stuff like that yeah but um obviously when the bike warms up the the coolant comes up but it wasn't even touching that line but maybe just because the, the ambient temperature is higher but it was like it was I was like, okay, well, I guess I got to top up anyway. And then all of a sudden I'll, I'll, I'll go to top up and it's like, I don't have to top up because it's at uh, the bare minimum. And then you go again and the same with the oil. You'll check the oil. The oil's low. Okay. So you'll stand the bike up and make sure you check your oil. You'll, you'll take it out for a run. Obviously the oil gets thinner when, you, when, when it's hot like that. 
Then what happens is I'll put the plug back in, I'll go get my oil, I'll check it one more time and the level's fine. <laughs> it's like, it's like, uh, and it'll do it, and it does it, it does it sporadically. It's not like uh, only when it's hot or when it's cold. It'll do it when it's hot, it'll do it when it's cold. So I don't know how, I haven't seen the cutaway for this engine, so there's probably somewhere where the oil, uh, you know, a, a bunch of the oil either just kind of, uh, you know, lays up and then uh, if it doesn't come out, come down before you shoot uh, you shut it off it uh, registers as low oil so it's just kind of a weird thing um this bike uh, particularly i think takes uh two and or sorry 3.8 uh liters um so of oil so that's about uh three almost four little things so i have almost enough oil sitting down there now i don't know what the good time center put in it when i bought this bike that oil okay here, here's what happened is number one i bought the bike okay and i bought it from a dealership so brand new tires chain sprockets oil change fluid changes and the radiator they say you can do it every two years but i don't know it doesn't hurt you it's nice to know when you've done it right um so they, there was obviously clean oil in it, and the oil again is still not, it's not that dirty considering uh, uh, I've got from last year and this year because the first year I bought it I didn't put it on the road, so that's say two years ago when I bought the bike, right? Um, then I put it on the road last year late in August, so it's like there was no point in doing the oil change uh, then. I figured I'll wait till this season to do it because I didn't put enough mileage on it to get the oil really, really dirty. As we can see now, the oil's not super, super dirty. But it's very thin oil there, so I'm thinking it's probably 10W40. Or, yeah, yeah, 10W40. Uh, but the bike requires 15W50, which I nobody in Canada sells 15W50. <laughs> uh, but 2050 I got. So it's a little bit thicker, but I'm okay. Again, I'm not, I'm not racing in it. And the, tw the 2050 will give a little more protection. It's formulated for uh, motorcycle stuff. Um, now the thing that's really interesting is that, uh, uh, you know, when I change the oil, I'll, I'll notice whether either I, a, if the oil's too thick, I'll probably notice a little, uh, throttle lag. You, 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 you can actually, once you get to know your bike well, you'll know when you're getting oil lag. Uh, it, it's a weird, it's a weird sensation, but you can actually notice it in the bike. And I noticed it with my other bikes when I ran 2050. Uh, some of my bikes, uh, like the, the Japanese stuff all runs 1040 pretty much. Uh, these bikes, cause they run hot. That's probably why they're a 50 weight oil, uh, 15 W 50. Uh, but 20 W 50 is, is pretty thick. Uh, the good news about that is you got lots of protection. The bad news is on a high compression en engine you might want to let it warm up before you crank on it because uh, well you should do that anyway i do it all the time uh but at least you got more protection than there uh my rear tires are doing okay so my goal is to because I, I you're not going to do it all in one day oil change and everything like that, unless you have the whole day to work on it so today i'm doing the oil change uh maybe tomorrow or the next day I'll, i've i've when i bought the bike one of the things i did is i went out and bought everything i needed for the oil change the filter everything like that and then have it on on uh, on hand, and then as soon as I use all that stuff, what I do is I start saving up. So whenever it comes time to do it again, I already have the stuff stocked away, and it's like I don't have to put out all this money to that I may not have at the time, but I'll have it and just have it sit on the shelf. It doesn't hurt the oil to sit on the shelf in the in the, in the containers, right? So what I'm going to do is just basically do the oil change today, and the filter. I got, I'll show you. Uh, this is where you're going to really like me because I'm going to save you so much aggro. Go buy one of these. That's it. Six bucks or five bucks, whatever it is. Just shut up and spend the money. You'll have it forever and you're welcome. Because trying to take off an oil filter with those filter strap wrenches or hit and miss, it depends on, I mean, that filter was probably brand new from the Good Time Center, so it's been on there for less than a year. I probably don't even really have to change it, but I, I like to, even though like some people change their filter every second oil change or every third oil change, I do it every time. It's like, it doesn't hurt, right? Um, and the nice thing is, again, you can get in there. I'll show you how it goes. Uh, your mileage might vary depending on your type of bike and if you have a fairing. If you don't have a fairing, you don't have to worry about this. But uh, It's out the front here, so I just get like that. And there you go. And all you got to do is just use your, uh, your ratchet. Do it very gently though. Go slow. 
Uh, I'll take that off. When I take it off, I'll uh, show you a couple little tricks when you put your filter back on. But I'll leave it at this because I don't want the video to run too, too long. But there you go. My first oil change. Uh, other thing, inspect your plug. Uh, usually these things are magnetic on the bottom, but uh, yeah, inspect the threads. It's a good idea to buy a spare plug even if you don't need it. Careful putting it in. Careful taking it out. Uh, don't over tighten it. Don't, you know, finesse because aluminum cases, you strip those out, you're going to hate yourself forever because you're going to have a bike sitting there waiting to get Healy coiled and then it's probably going to leak all the time and just do as I tell you to do. Go easy on it. Uh, but it's good to have a spare one. I didn't drop it in the, uh, <laughs> I didn't drop it in the uh, vat either, so that's good. So <laughs> got the glove full of oil here. That's what the gloves are for. You know, rather get hot oil on your hands, get it, get it on that. Uh, got it on the fairing. I didn't think it was going to hit the fairing. I thought I, I guess it's leaned over just enough. But anyway, what I'll do is I'll probably straighten the bike up a bit, see if any more comes out. But the way it is under there, I'll show you in the next video. It's actually pretty good. So anyway, I'll leave it at that for now, and then I'll show you when I'm done.